Greetings! Welcome to Saint of the Week, the show where we choose one saint's feast day from this week and discuss their life and their impact on the church. The saint for this week is Saint Augustine of Hippo, whose feast day is August 28th, this Tuesday. Augustine was born on November 13th, 354, in Tagaste, Numidia, which is now Souk Arasan, Algeria. His parents, Patricius and Saint Monica, were well respected, even though they were poor. But they managed to scrape together enough money to give Augustine the Christian education that his mother desired for him, even though his father was a pagan. Even though, as mentioned before, Augustine received a Christian education and had a Christian mother whom he dearly loved, he fell away from the faith as he entered his adult years. When he was 17, he moved to Carthage to study rhetoric. It was here that he fell into an immoral lifestyle that included sexual impurity. During this time, he famously prayed, Lord, grant me purity, but not yet. This sexual immorality led Augustine to have an extended affair with a young woman, who eventually bore his son, Adiodatus. He abandoned Christianity for the Manichaean religion, which proposed strictly scientific reasons for natural phenomena. Augustine fully devoted himself to this religion, vehemently defending all of its teachings, and even leading some of his friends to join as well. But for all his fervor, he was still not at peace. Augustine came back to Tagaste in 373 and taught grammar for a year before returning to Carthage to teach rhetoric. At this time, he began to doubt the teachings of the Manichaeans, although he didn't abandon the religion just yet. He remained at Carthage for nine years and then traveled to Rome to establish a school of rhetoric there. However, his reception was lackluster, and the next year he was given a new teaching position in Milan by the Roman prefect, Symmachus. Ever since Augustine had originally turned away from the faith, his mother Monica had fervently prayed for his conversion. It was during Augustine's time at Milan that her prayers began to be truly answered. Her influence and his studies had begun to lead him in the direction of Christianity. But it was his friendship with St. Ambrose that marked the greatest change in his life. Ambrose led Augustine back to the Catholic faith by both his exquisite preaching and his genuine charitable manner. It was not long before Augustine was once again convinced of the truth, and on April 24, 387, both he and his son were baptized by Ambrose. He broke off his relationship with his lover, planning to marry a young heiress, but he changed his mind and decided to become a priest. Soon after Augustine's baptism, both Monica and Adiodatus died. Augustine then sold everything he had, except for the family house, and gave the money to the poor. He was ordained a priest in 391 in Hippo Regius, Algeria, which is modern-day Anaba. He then became a well-known preacher, notably speaking out against the Manichaean religion that he himself had once believed. In 395, Augustine was made bishop, a position in which he performed excellently and remained in until his death. He had a powerful intellect and also a great skill with words, gifts he applied to the thing he is most known for, his writings. With nearly impeccable theology, they have been an invaluable resource to the church all throughout history, and gained Augustine the honor of Doctor of the Church. It would take far too long to list here all of Augustine's works or all the topics that he wrote on, but we do recommend that you investigate them yourself if you are interested. In the spring of 430, the Germanic tribe of the Vandals invaded North Africa and besieged Hippo. Augustine remained ever a source of encouragement and hope to the people, but he fell ill and died his life of preaching, teaching, penance, and prayer coming to an end on August 28th. After he died, the Vandals lifted the siege, but they returned soon after and burned down the city, except for Augustine's cathedral and library, which they left unharmed. He is a patron saint of brewers, printers, theologians, sore eyes, and a great number of cities and dioceses. St. Augustine is truly one of the greatest saints of all time, in spite of the reckless and immoral life he originally lived. Indeed, it only serves to increase his admirability because he overcame his shortcomings and made a clear and marked change, becoming an exemplary example of the riches of God's grace. His great understanding of the truth has allowed his writings to be essentially the basis of all Western theology, and he will undoubtedly continue to influence future saints for years to come. St. Augustine of Hippo, pray for us. Our honorable mentions for this week are St. Jane Elizabeth Bichier de Age, St. Gebert of Constance, St. Medericus, Blessed Maria Raffles, St. Raymond Nonatus, and St. Simeon the Stylite. 
And of course, there are thousands of other saints who undoubtedly have their feast days this week. But there are so many of them that there is no way we could list them all here. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of Saint of the Week. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Peace be to you.